Hey everybody, this is Perch. And now I've talked before about the problem with uh, kind of the diminishing villains in comics. And I've also talked about the fact that I've talked to editors, I've talked to writers who mention that they kind of are urged to steer away, or in the editor's case, they urge people to steer away from really, really bad villainy. They don't want to trigger their readers. They don't want to put out a story that really exemplifies evil. And on the editor's side, it's because, you know, they don't want to get wound up into controversy. I don't completely buy that, but people believe a lot of things, certainly, that don't necessarily hold under weight and scrutiny. But basically, the idea is that, uh, you know, they, they don't want to get a lot of... Um, bad attention. They don't want people to get the wrong idea. They don't want their readership to uh, be emotionally traumatized by a comic, which is quite a difference from the days of, uh, say, Watchmen. But anyway, on the writer side, it's uh, all of those, you know, they want to conform to kind of what people are telling them to do and, and everything else. But in addition to that, and this is kind of the, um, the part that has always made me scratch my head, is they don't, uh, they, there's a belief that if they put in a, a truly nasty villain, that is not a caricature, not a, a you know obviously kind of parody. That the some readers, some people, maybe even some of their fellow creators, will assume they share the views of the villain. Um, something that I find profoundly weird because you know in the '80s there were plenty of uh, stories that Mark Grunwald did with say you know Nazis and the Red Skull and you know various fascist characters, and I don't recall anybody running around saying Mark Grunwald was uh, was any of those things. I don't believe people call Louise Simonson a, a genocidal maniac for writing Apocalypse. Uh, that, that, that seems absurd, but we do live in absurd times. Um, I, I was, uh, I'll take you away for comics for a minute, but you'll understand how it all ties back in together. There's a debate going on at uh, my kid's school. This is probably the debate, uh, this is one of the last debates of uh, <laughs> before the kids come out and they're homeschooled or private schools. I mean, we're at the end of this silliness. But the debate is basically around the Civil War. And the idea is, can you teach slavery? And the decision that the school is making is, no. We can talk briefly that slavery was a terrible, awful, inhumane thing. But, you know, we can't really talk about it. You know, when we talk about the Civil War, we're going to kind of diminish it because we don't want to uh, accidentally give people a pro-slavery message. This is from an email that comes from the, the you know, the superintendent. And I, I have a very, I just have a really hard time understanding that logic. First off, it frightens me a little bit. Are we worried that there's a way you teach the Civil War to and this is uh, third grade, that you teach the Civil War to third graders in a way that is somehow pro-slavery? How, how I, I mean, I'm honestly curious, how, how, exactly, how exactly do you accomplish that? Like, what is being, what are you teaching? But I also think it's important for kids, and, and it definitely age-appropriate type stuff, you know, but uh, you know, my older daughter's in sixth grade now. And I think understanding evil, understanding the horrors of what was going on is actually a good thing for her to do. Not because I want to traumatize her, of course, but because you need to understand what evil looks like. It, 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 the Civil War doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you ignore the slavery aspect of it. There's a lot of conversations going on in school right now about the critical race theory and all this other kind of stuff, but what's... You know, what's not in there are some basic, you know, things like, for example, um, some of the plantations in the South that got in the business of actually trying to uh, to breed more slaves so they could in turn sell them to places like Louisiana, other other locations. It's a truly evil thing. Uh, I mean, disgusting, terrible, uh, absolute horror stories about that. I think you want to know that the side that was that, that got defeated was up to stuff like that. I think you want to know that the you know the, the the villainy and the horrors of slavery was something worth fighting for. That that many people, white and black, certainly gave their lives to defeat and to end. How is that sacrifice, how is that triumph over slavery supposed to work if you don't you show if you don't talk if you don't talk the evil, and, and are you worried that by talking about the evil, you're somehow promoting it? Again, that's bizarre to me. Extremely bizarre. And so when we get to comics, it does connect. See, how are you supposed to really celebrate 
heroism and the triumph over evil if you don't actually you know, explain the evil. You know one of the things that would make the Captain Marvel title absolutely the best? Uh, well, not the best, but just would improve the title dramatically. Put Captain Marvel against a truly evil, reprehensible villain. Not one that talks snarky. Not uh, She's got this arch enemy that they've built up, this Vox Supreme character, um, who was originally part of, I guess, Donnie Cates' run. Um, and when he did that, the death of the Inhumans. Um, but the character is is kind of quippy at times. Is like It's unclear what they're doing. Like, I'm after supremacy-ish with this goo. It's not a, it, the villain is very weak. And as a result, Captain Marvel uh, is, is, is also weak. We don't get to see Captain Marvel really defeat villains. And because we don't see Captain Marvel defeat villains, you know, we, we, what's the point of Captain Marvel? I, and I think you could go down the run. You know what would make Captain America better? A really good villain, a really nasty villain that does terrible things that gets the better of Captain America. And he has to rally and, and overcome this evil that tends to always work in comics. Same thing with Batman, same thing with Superman, same thing with all these characters. The villain should be absolutely destructive, should be unquestionably evil. And nobody, no writer should be worried that this villain character that they've created is somehow people are going to mistake them for that character. That again is bizarre. It's the same kind of weird logic that says if we teach, uh, if we teach slavery, if we teach that not teach slavery, but teach that there was slavery, that somehow kids are going to get the, uh, the, the idea that we actually think that was a pretty, pretty good idea. Again, you, you, you have to be a thoroughly incompetent instructor to, uh, to be able to, to, to pull that one off is, is kind of all I'm saying there. I, I think that you need, we need to celebrate the triumphs we've had. I, I would argue one of the things that might make the U.S. a little bit better, healthier, happier at the moment is that if, if we actually did celebrate some of those huge moments, if we did talk about, hey, you know what? Uh, yeah, there was slavery. Hey, you know what? We defeated slavery and here's what it cost and here's what it took and here's, look how awful it was and look how we were able to overcome it in these areas. I think those are things to celebrate. I, 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 why shy? I mean, we shouldn't shy away from the fact that there was this bad thing that a lot of people rallied to go and, and put it into. That's a good thing. That's, uh, that's a positive. It's, uh, it's, it's backwards if we're trying to hide it somehow. I think that in comics, we're seeing less and less and less on the villainy. The villainy is also increasingly just very uh, vanilla. It's very like like, and, and this is a shame to say because he spent a long time building up to it. Look at Null, the the god of darkness that uh, Donny Cates used as a culmination to his Venom storyline, ultimately to the Eddie Brock story and to, to everything that was done there. Uh, Null was this this god, and it, it was just this this crazy powerful thing going to completely envelop the earth and everything else. What did Null do? Well, Null shows up, covers the earth in goo brainwashes some of the heroes for a little bit of the time, and then gets defeated. It, it, what felt like relatively quickly. There wasn't anything particularly special about Noel. What was Noel's trying to do? Turn out the light? Uh, I mean, that was... that was. It, it's funny, uh, Cates and Stegman did a, a lot to kind of really beef up this, uh, this villain to talk about how this is a absolutely destructive, uh, you've never seen it before kind of threat. Uh, totally bad. The world is not prepared for all the horrors this character was going to do. But when all was said and done, he kind of showed up, hung out in Manhattan, blanketed with goo, got his ass kicked. That was it. Very one-dimensional. Very one-dimensional character. The same thing is true with a lot of these. That's why I do get excited when I hear, like, say, Philip Kennedy Johnson talk about what he's going to do with War World and really try and put some mythology to it and really try and make the new Mongol super, super evil, super destructive, kind of really make a true villain. I hope he does. You know, based on his work with Alien, he, he seems to understand the need to have complex villains, so I hope he does. You look at the villain that showed up in the um, what Becky Cloonan uh, Wonder Woman uh, series that's going on right there. Oh, Michael Conrad's on that too. That's right. Um, look at this villain that that she kind of, did Wonder Woman chase through, uh, I don't know, the afterlife. The, 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 there was, there was, the, the villain was one-dimensional. 
just there's very there's nothing really to it. A lot of villains have the same motivation. Ha ha ha! I'm going to de- defeat and rule. That's what I'm going to do. R- rule and stuff, and and then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go get some breakfast at Shoney's, and then I'm not going to pay for it. How how are you how are you liking that? Not not paying for this breakfast? Yeah, that's right. I'm I'm bad, and I've got a brother. That's right, to a brother that's also evil. And and the two of us are two, two evil brothers that eat at Shoney's and don't pay. That's what we do. I don't know where I was going with all that. Th- this is the problem, is it, by hiding some of this past, particularly if you're afraid of it, particularly if you're afraid that this villainy is going to trigger someone or anything else, you get these very one-dimensional villains. When you get one-dimensional villains, you get heroes that never really accomplish anything. When they don't really accomplish anything, you're left with just kind of having to tell the reader they accomplished something and that's why you get a lot of pages these days of Harry characters getting hugs characters like oh my god you're the best i'm a super super big fan of you i had a poster in my room of you didn't jerk off to it once it was there for for inspiration that's why i had it that's that's what you've got now uh, you've got pages and pages of pages um wonder woman returning i'm not just picking on that title but when wonder woman did return to living went to the hall of justice it was like this parade of Wonder Woman seeing all the heroes like, oh my God, it's Wonder Woman. I'm, I'm glad you're back. It's go, oh, Ray. It's it's you. Now she'd been gone for what, like ten months, sure, and or in in linear verse time, three minutes, and yeah, I'm sure it was very traumatic for people. But all the same, it's like we didn't get because the villain was so one dimensional. When she returned, it wasn't like uh, there was any kind of big victory to kind of unpack. It was, hey, you're back. God, you're awesome. I always knew you be back because it's so awesome is what you are it's you and your brother who eats at choney said sorry I, i'll just stop that right now anyway don't don't hide don't run away from the villainy the villainy is what showcases the heroism thanks for listening